Hey everyone, Eric Watson here, freelance writer, player of games, writer of words, recorder of videos, and occasional recorder of hot take videos. I don't usually do these kind of videos, uh, especially if you're new here. I typically just stick to my lane and do my uh, live streaming actual play content. I do my live streaming crafting streams for my live play games. I do patron content, and I do reviews of Roll20 uh, module, which are usually the official 5e campaign books, and a bunch of DMs Guild content but this whole OGO 1.1 thing is just blowing up in the most insane way that um i it, i think it's the biggest thing that's happened to D&D uh 5th edition since 5th edition's inception so i think it's worth uh discussing and talking about and i don't uh sit here with a script and with a big you know high energy attitude or anything like um perhaps a lot of youtube folks do i just kind of ramble and talk to you all as if I was a person and you were a person, so uh, this whole thing started uh, when the OGL 1.1 was uh, got leaked uh, with a very, very well-written article on io9 by one uh, Linda Kodea. I'm going to pronounce their name. Um, it's, uh, in fact, we'll go to the browser window right there. There we are. And uh, they received a, I guess, a copy of this 1.1 OGL, which is supposed to be coming in January, presumably because we've got the new edition of D&D coming out fairly soon, and, you know, Wizards just looking to update this uh, license that has been around since the year 2000. And the OGL is what allows uh, other companies to create content for D&D. Now, there are some wonky rules about that, like they usually have to say 5e versus Dungeons & Dragons, you know, or, or the world's greatest role-playing game or something silly like that. They can't use any um, IP stuff that Wizards has specifically trademarked, like Beholders, uh, Mind Flayers, the actual Forgotten Realms setting, I believe. It all has to be your own generic uh, you know, fantasy setting or something. But you can use the 5e like classes and, and uh, races and uh, systems and feats and the whole you know, D20 system can be used because, importantly, you cannot actually copyright game mechanics, but you can copyright um, things like uh, IP and uh, lore. So there's a there's a weird gray area there, but things always seem to work uh, pretty well to allow other creators to flourish in the space. And originally it was through, you know, Dungeon Magazine or Dragon Magazine that we saw a lot of content. And now that, you know, the internet has blown up, obviously, and social media and all these different uh, content sharing websites, that suddenly you have this huge, awesome ecosystem of creators and you have ones that have blown up to such a big degree and most famously when D&D, &D, and I'm not super um, well read on the history, I was not around uh, playing D&D during the uh, third or fourth edition eras, but that's kind of how Paizo was created was because D&D apparently went more restrictive with fourth edition and fourth edition was very poorly received and thus uh, a uh, group that was creating content for D and D at the time decided to make uh, essentially their own game system with Pathfinder, which was basically D and D and everything, but the name it was three point seven five or something. And now, since they've done you know Pathfinder Second Edition, which is a little bit different, Starfinder, which is a little bit different, but I believe they all still operate on that original OGL open gaming license. And now you've got other big publishers like you know Cobalt Press and. Um, uh, Ghostfire Games, uh, Matt Colville, uh, I can't, uh, Ronin, I think. There's some that are far larger than your typical, like one, you know, one person indie group trying to just release their own stuff on the DMs. Although there's got a ton of those as well. So all of this is to say, obviously, times have changed since that original license was created in 2000, and I don't necessarily begrudge. Hasbro and uh, Wizards for wanting to look back at this license being like, all right, now, wait a minute, this, you know, the world is far different, the ecosystem is different, um, and yeah, D&D &D is uh, a bigger brand, like, how can we change things so that to make sure we're getting a more fair piece of the pie because people are using, you know, our, our system? And again, it's a very gray area because you cannot copyright game mechanics. So d and is trying to do whatever they can to say, well, you're still using, everybody's playing D&D, &D, and so we want to have a piece. I mean, look at like Critical Role and stuff. So they obviously see that as a huge blow-up opportunity. You can also make an argument for how this is kind of analogous to the whole uh, streaming games thing and how certain game, most game companies are have become okay with it because of the big 
um, good press it gives, hopefully, and then the influx of new people. It's, it's very much like a, a marketing thing, basically. And now you've got, in fact, publishers, um, typically smaller to mid-sized publishers will actually go to streamers and sponsor games because they do see this as like the best marketing you can do versus when it first started and some companies like Nintendo um, are still very leery about like, well, no, we don't want people to just play our games and let you show that. Like that's our content. You're making money off our content. So I understand that's a great area and especially for perhaps bigger companies and, and I don't want to be ageist, but maybe older folks that maybe don't have that internet, um, you know, background or generation, they look at that and be like, well, no way, we're going to shut this down. And I feel like maybe that might be what's kind of happening with Wizards of the Coast right now. And, you know, the, they made a statement, which I will go over to here, because things started to leak in December about that they were trying to renegotiate with some of these big companies. And then the D&D Beyond staff made a statement on December 21st, basically trying to assuage um, people's complaints and concerns about what was going on. And essentially they said like, yes, we are going to be releasing 1.1. It's coming in early 2023. Um, they said uh, like, we only want to have this um, agreement, for example, make sure it sticks to uh, PDFs and printed media and not for other things like uh, they mentioned videos and video games. Um, VTTs, although it does say, hey, we've got uh, custom agreements with those VTTs. So, for example, like Roll20 and Fantasy Grounds, they already have custom agreements with those uh, to release their content. I think this does put a big problem on things like Foundry, though, which was always, I think, kind of a gray area. Maybe somebody in the comments can help me out with how Fan Foundry works with its um, uh, 5e content, but uh, clearly they're wanting to have custom, you know, bespoke agreements for all those uh, different companies. But they want to uh, stick to just. Uh, PDFs and uh, printed media for the official uh, OGL. And they're basically saying, hey, if you make just, you know, a normal, like not necessarily a huge living wage number, which is 50, I guess it depends on where you live, honestly, because people can live off 20,000 a year. Um, if you make more than 50,000 a year, then you're gonna have to report your uh, revenue annually uh, to, I guess, Hasbro. Uh, if you make more than, I think it was, yeah, 750000 a year, then they're actually going to basically, you're entering into another income tax bracket. We're going to start paying 25%, I believe, uh, for every dollar you make after that. If you make less than 50000 a year, then they're just saying, hey, just accept the license terms. I think you have to put like a new, you know, stamp on your product, but otherwise we're, you still have to let us know what you're doing. And basically they just want to be able to monitor everything. So that is a little bit more restrictive, but it's not necessarily the, you know, the world is burning around you mentality because they're just looking on these ones, on these apparently fewer than 20 creators worldwide who make more than that 750,000 income, are they looking to get royalties from, which you could argue it's up to those companies now, whether they want to play ball with that or whether they want to take their stuff and be like, well, wait a minute, we've, we've got our own following. You can't copyright game mechanics. We can just do the Paizo thing and just do our own thing. I suspect, and I will show you how I think that is fixing to happen. So I think Wizards is going to end up kind of shooting themselves in the foot a little bit in this case as we go in for a very uh, turbulent moment. But people were saying, you know, okay, fine, I guess that's worrisome, but at least maybe it doesn't affect me. The OGL is not going away. You'll still be able to create new content. Um, basically says, what do they say? Um, Thousands of creators publishing across Kickstarter, DMs, Guild, and more are a critical part of the D&D experience, and we will continue to support and encourage them to do that through 1D&D &D and beyond. So that's fine. The problem becomes with this leaked 1.1 document where it actually did a lot worse things than what people were thinking. Um, for example, retroactively updating everything to 1.1, everything in the back catalog. Because I think a lot of people were thinking, well, okay, I guess this is just for the stuff that's going to have 1.1, but I can still make stuff for like, you know, fifth edition or, uh, you know, older editions of D&D. And apparently that's not going to be the case. They're going to retroactively apply everything to this 1.1. And thus uh, suddenly like all of your, you know, income, you would have to update to those old products and update everything in, in that way. And, and the weird thing is they would have to, you know, uh, revoke or supersede the old OGL. And there's a lot of interesting legal talk about how perhaps wizards can't actually do that. And they're just kind of banking on the fact that hopefully most people don't um, challenge them on that. Uh, it gets really interesting that I won't go in the weeds too much, but uh, clearly you can Google search some folks who are far smarter than me and have uh, more in play that understand how that works. Um, does not allow for anything else like videos, virtual tabletops, BTTs, uh, computer games, novels, apps, graphic novels. I think we already went over that. The fact that um, they basically own all their all your shit is what I'm trying to find. Um, 
uh, you have to put your stuff on there, royalties, um, but basically saying um, we now own all of your uh, content, which is a little bit um, worrisome. Here we go. Uh, uh, our close at hand, there's a bunch of worldwide rights given away to creators. When the, the company can modify or terminate the agreement for any reason whatsoever. Watsi also gets the rights to use any content that licensees create, whether commercial or non-commercial. So you're basically giving your rights to them when you use their license. I believe that wasn't necessarily the case before. Um, in fact, I mean, the original OGL was just like 900 words and the new one is like 9,000 words or something crazy. Uh, so they're definitely trying to cover more of their bases here. And it's just, like I said, they're trying to keep up with this new expanded ecosystem. And I think they are doing this in about the not a very finesse way basically they, they really are coming off like the evil corporation <laughs> which maybe all corporations are just evil at that point and we can all be cynical capitalists but uh it really is disappointing to see uh, a company react in such a strong anti-consumer way when it's just bare face they're just after making more money like at, at least lie to me when you're pissing on me <laughs> like <laughs> It was the coast is clearly expecting these OGL changes to be met with some resistance. The document does note that if the company oversteps, they are aware that they will receive community pushback and bad PR and were more than open to being convinced that we made a wrong decision. Which is weird that that would be in the document itself. I guess they're trying to couch themselves as saying, we're sorry. <laughs> so there's obviously a lot of pushback about this. And um, I understand where wizards is coming from i really do like i'm not trying to be sympathetic to the big bad corporation but i get that i get the need to update a license that is 20 years old and with a far different ecosystem in play um i think it's problematic that they are um basically eliminating the old one though to where it's like this one is no longer going to be is null and void and now you have to do this new one to keep on doing content in fact all of your old stuff is going to be updated as well i think that's really awkward um and i it it feels just way more restrictive especially and it feels frankly very anti um these third party companies getting to the big level right it's it's almost like it's because you have to you hit like a certain income bracket when you uh make a certain amount of money basically saying like we don't want people to be too successful <laughs> like creating content for uh our thing and, and that is going to stifle a lot of the most successful people because then you're going to lose those people to making their own systems and maybe that is is the end game every time this happens maybe this is just the ragnarok cycle happening is that um you know wizards gets really big and then they come out with a new thing saying all right now we're gonna you know clamp things down and, and try to get as much money as possible and then the biggest companies splinter off and do their own thing and then we see the cycle like renew itself maybe that's going to happen um we've Co cobalt press has already mentioned the fact is and obviously people are still you know working on things those things are going to still happen they say as we look ahead to begin which by the way cobalt press a wonderful company I've, I've covered a lot of their stuff throughout the years and i'm currently running uh, one of their big uh, 5e campaigns that takes place in their world of midgard uh, which is my empire of the ghouls campaign currently running for uh, patrons i highly recommend checking that out they're uh, just absolutely really really good stuff if you like you know generally forgotten realms style world building and, and adventure and maybe have been disappointed with some you know 5e releases or have to you know change and fix things around i highly recommend checking out cobalt press's stuff uh, they say as we look ahead it becomes even more important for our actions to represent our values while we wait to see what the future holds we're moving forward with clear ed work on a new core fantasy tabletop rule set available open and subscription free for those who love it codename project black flag as the only thing they mentioned about is the fact that they're making one. And then I believe, um, was it Matt Colville, MCDM, that came out saying that basically doing the same thing, like he's um, was you know, another huge creator for 5e stuff as a third-party creator, and has said like, hey, going forward, we're without, and, and you, you could argue this is maybe a knee-jerk reaction to like, Wizards haven't even given out an official release, by the way. In fact, I've got the tab pulled up. Um, literally their last statement on January 10th, it is currently January 12th in the afternoon, uh, my time, um, we know you have questions about the OGL we'll be sharing soon. Thank you for your patience. Like, that's the last thing they've said. So the fact that they've been this silent about it is, I think, kind of damning on their end and, and really 
uh, gives credence to the fact that all this is very true and is very much happening. Otherwise, they would want to, I believe, shut that down pretty quick. But as a big corporation, I also know that they want to make sure they get all their ducks in a row before they start making any kind of statements about this. And I think we'll be all very interested to see what they say. But uh, MCDM and Cobalt Press have since even joined forces to say, well, maybe we can work on something together. Because I think the big worry thing for me and a lot of folks is saying, well, you know, even if d d is not necessarily the best rule set around or even the best world, it has the biggest community. It's it's the biggest um, it, it's the biggest t- tabletop RPG around. Like there's no question about that. Other ones can have better rules and better systems for different mechanics. Um, but there, there's so much support and so many people operate in this sphere. And and that's partly the reason why t- you see a ton of uh, YouTube folks like like me and my group. Um, although we're actually friends first and became YouTube folks after that. Um, that we use uh, D&D 5e because there is so much community and support build up for that. There's so much good third party content. And that is a, a big reason why 5e has been so, uh, you know, popularized and so big right now. And I think the worry is that when this happens, it starts clamping us down. Like, what does that mean for the future of not only for d and I, I think D&D be fi- will be fine, but you'll see other things pop up. What does that do to the community? Does that fracture the community again? Because... When this happened back in fourth edition, this would have been, um, I think, over a decade ago. So, you know, social media was still kind of in its early stages. I mean, Facebook's been around since, you know, oh five or six, whatever it's been. Um, but like Twitter was in its infancy. Like you didn't have, you know, DMs Guild or all that. Like all of this was still very, very early. So now when you've got suddenly this big social media presence and the community really recognizes themselves and that can create something like this OG 1.1 just blowing up into a huge, huge thing, at least online. I don't know how that translates to, the, you know, the real world, but what does that mean for uh, this community and how it fractures or how it comes together? I think that's what a lot of us, including me, are, are very, very worried about. I'm going to look at a statement I just saw on Reddit recently, and yes, I had all these tabs pulled up uh, in <laughs> before starting this video. Um, by a company called Frog God Games. Shout out to Frog God Games. I don't, I, I'm not entirely familiar with their work um i think i've heard of them but i I don't think i've actually reviewed or or seen any of their stuff but apparently they do produce um they're another third party creator they mentioned the fact um they will not sign the new this is a this is by the way i found this on reddit posted by uh underscore the underscore librarian in the dnd uh subreddit i don't know if that's a disc uh disc world reference or not the librarian uh, Frog God Games and Necromancer Games will not sign the new open the OGL license version 1.1. We believe what Hasbro is doing is wrong in bad faith and likely not legal. We fully believe the strengths of the industry is based on multiple people with diverse approaches, making rules, setting, and adventures for our favorite game. Skip a little bit here. Uh, we are not offended by their desire to make money off third-party publishing market. We are offended that unless we give them the permanent right to use and sell our intellectual property with no compensation, we cannot continue to operate. We are offended that unless we give them the right to let them revoke our ability to publish at any time within only 30 days notice, we cannot make any more books. We are offended that even though we have spent thousands of dollars on making virtual tabletop versions of our games, we can't do it anymore. That part's a little nebulous because I, I think that might be a little bit of a knee-jerk reaction because, I, like I said, I believe BTTs do have those um, uh, agreements already in place, but I, I get that... Um, it, they didn't couch that in very good language, at least that what we've seen. And partly this is, again, the problem, the fact that we're getting all this from a leak. It is very, I think it's a very reputable leak, and I would, I believe that article in its entirety, but we still haven't had an official statement. Once he sounds like Darth Vader talking to Lando Calrissian, Empire Strikes Back, I'm altering the Dio Prey, I don't alter it any further. All right, we're just including memes in our statements now. <laughs> Once he in bad faith is breaking a promise, clear and simple. Uh, intentionally damaging Americans games of Frog God Games, as well as the entire industry. If they succeed in deauthorizing 1.0, OGO, we will have to stop production. You mentioned the fact that they'll have to lay off a lot of people, uh, putting third part publishers out of business, creating a monoculture of work in D&D, culture of work in D&D that prevents diversity of thought, makes it only one company has input into the hobby. Um, I mean, there's, I don't think it's going to stop. D&D is not necessarily tabletop RPGs. It is the biggest one around. Um, I think tabletop RPG is, is going to be fine. I think D and D is going to be fine, but I, I think we may end up with a situation that's like going into fourth edition, where suddenly they just shoot themselves in the foot, and you've got all these other, you know, medium to large size third party publishers who suddenly realize they don't actually need the OGL around anymore. They can do their own thing um, with blackjack and hookers. In fact, screw the blackjack. We do not care. I can do memes too. We do not care about one D and D. We do not care about one D&D. That's also a bit of a niche. I think a lot of people do care about one D&D, but, but 
again, this is couched in this OGL 1.1 coming out. A lot of people who would be ambivalent to excited about one D&D, I think you have lost a lot of those people. You've damaged that that trust uh, and, and the brand in a lot of ways. Like, damn, what we do care about is our ability to perpetual 1.0 OGL granted to us in 2000 by Watsi as they promised we could. And that's the thing. Like, I believe it was designed as like an in perpetuity ongoing license. Again, I'm not a lawyer. I don't know. There are smarter people than me uh, making those statements and and uh, you can look up a lot of that information online that uh, hopefully you can get a better understanding for, but it does look like it is a very much a gray area that I, I'm not sure Wizards is in the right to be able to do that. What does this mean? Recommends for Frog God Games. First, it means we stand up to them, fight and continue to work in our existing license. Uh... Or use by anyone. Why yes? Once he proven this will be untrustworthy. We only need to wean ourselves off as soon as we can. Go black flag. So they mentioned the fact that maybe this is the time where we get another Pathfinder ask, and maybe we'll see Paizo. I haven't actually looked at uh, what Paizo statements have been. I'm sure there is one about um, you know what what the next step is for a lot of these other publishers. And and to me, I think you know as as disappointing and anxiety creating as this whole situation has been. I think I am a little bit excited in a weird way to see what a new system that's maybe just slightly, you know, look at what, because I think there's a lot of problems in, in 5e that could use fixing, you know, like travel. Nobody enjoys travel for a lot of reasons. Um, the, the whole exploration pillar. I, I think you could make those adjustments and improvements, keep everything that worked. I mean, that should be, <laughs> the depressing thing is that should fucking be what, uh, one D&D is, or D&D 6E should be that improvement. And yet, I, a huge reason why 5E has been so popular is because of that OGL, be, you know, and their, and their SRD, the standard resource document, like the fact that you can have all these creators, uh, you know, stream their games and make content and sell it on the DMs Guild. DMs Guild, by the way, already takes 50% of all your sales. Uh, or you can sell, if you want to play with their toys, or you can just use their rules and go to drive through RPG or even sell it on your own website through, uh, or go to Kickstarter and make all those. Although there's new Kickstarter rules apparently that uh, they want you to use Kickstarter, not other crowdfunding platforms, and they take a certain royalty off of that. And that's that's all fun detail to look at. So I, I think it can be exciting just to see what these other uh, companies can do. But it, it's a, and maybe that's the, the shot in the arm that they needed to try to make their own thing and, 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 instill this new creativity so for that maybe we can be at least a little hopeful but it's a bummer that this is so much is changing and i think it's such a bummer that this is the way we learn right it's it's a absolute pr disaster for wizards it has broken all kinds of of trust and respect that this company uh if it had any is has lost now with with consumers and folks um i i don't know where we go from here um, but I'm, I'm going to be there with you all. I mean, <laughs> I, I don't have any news about my own stuff. I'm going to keep on operating, you know, mostly business as usual, covering and promoting, uh, creators of third party content, as well as the official, uh, releases. I haven't really talked about one D and D at all because I've just been busy doing my own thing. And now with the OGL coming out, like, I don't know how much people are going to be talking about that versus starting to look at other things and maybe, you know, all these other you know, Pathfinders and Starfinders and this new Black Flag and all these new ones come out are going to start getting more attention. And I will definitely look at um, covering some of that stuff as well. Uh, so I mainly wanted to put out this video to just say I share a lot of your concerns. Um, I, I am very anxious about what the future holds uh, for a lot of creators. I, I hope we get a firm answer from the fucking company uh, very soon because I think a lot of people are just wanting to wave pitchforks around and get maybe overly excited about this because we just don't have a firm response. And honestly, I think for the most part, we're maybe not even going to see a big change for most of us, but maybe that's not the case. Maybe a lot of us will see a big change. I, 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 we just don't know. I, I There's too much that I don't know because it needs to be confirmed. I, I think the easiest way forward would be for them to at least say, hey, if you want to make anything for 1D&D &D and beyond, here's the new rule set. But if you want to stay in the old edition and deal with that, you can totally do that and we're not going to jack with you. I think that to me would be the only way moving forward for them because then they could just save 
save face by saying, look, you can just stay. And, I mean, it screws them over, understandably, because obviously how many people are going to want to switch to the new one that's more restrictive? And that's why they need to do it retroactively. So I get it. But I guess you have to look at the difference between the money that you're making and the community that you've got. What is more important to you? And I think we all know the answer to that when it comes to these big companies. All right, I think uh, that's going to do it for this very sad, depressing video. Hopefully we can, I can give you a, a virtual, um, if not a hug, then maybe just a sit down with a beer as we both just kind of talk about this in, um, you know, muted, hushed tones. <laughs> and we can get back to uh, playing tabletop RPGs that we enjoy, maybe discovering uh, some new ones. And uh, hopefully I've, I can continue to uh, provide entertain me, entertaining and informative uh, content for you here on YouTube. So thank you for sitting down with me and hearing my thoughts on OGL 1.1. Bye.